So this COVID is connected to the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, even though COVID happened before it. Yeah. The Saturn-Jupiter conjunction was on the horizon already. It was, it was coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. It's yeah. not like you can't change the astronomy. We know it's coming. Hey everyone, welcome to In the House. I'm your host, Fraji. Today's guest is someone I really love chatting with because the sheer depth of his knowledge in planetary matters and how they can affect your life and society at large is vast. If you've ever been curious about astrology, then you're gonna wanna watch this entire segment. Carmen DeLucio is a practicing full-time astrologer with an international clientele. He helps people understand their potentials and forecast to assist them in navigating their life. Carmen currently is the astrology writer at Collective Evolution, and you can find him at CarmenDeLucio.com. So we start the interview off by getting into Carmen's backstory and how he got into astrology. Check it out. So back in 2006, I was at a time in my life where I started getting more into like spirituality and consciousness and things like that. And um, I was hanging out with a lot of new friends who were into, into that world. And uh, one of the people that, my, a mutual friend with one of my new friends that I had met at the time um, was studying astrology mm -hmm. and he asked me um, what my birth time was. And at the time I was, I used to read about my sun sign, mm -hmm. I'm a Taurus and I used to read about Taurus and I really resonated with it, um, but I never went beyond that. And I was actually into numerology at that time a little mm -hmm. bit. And so when he asked me my birth time to pull up my astrology chart on his computer, I was like, right away, I'm like, whoa, you asked me my birth time? That must be very specific. Because yeah. I always just knew about the sun signs for the month, right? Yeah. How old were you around this? Uh, I would have been 24, just turned 24, nice or a couple second. months after I turned 24. Yeah. Um, so when he, so, so when, as soon as he said that, and then he pulled it up, like literally at that second, I became obsessed with it. And then when, when I got home, I just kind of went on a rampage on Google, just Googling like everything astrology and trying to find, yeah. you know, trying to... Were you to... like, screw numerology? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I still like numerology, but I, I after that, I just focus more on astrology because astrology has a lot more layers to it. Yeah. There's a lot more going on, but numerology is great too. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I might go back to it yeah. eventually. But um, so, yeah, and then at that moment, I just went crazy. I just started, you know, researching it all the time and mm -hmm. then... Uh, then eventually, maybe like the, the next year or something like that, um, I moved out to the mountains. I was just going through a lot of changes in my life and I actually started meeting like actual astrologers and I got a reading and, and then uh, I just, you know, it, that was 2006. So mm -hmm. and I, I just been going from there. And at the time I wasn't really planning on being an astrologer. I had other things that I was working on, but, yeah. but I was still obsessed with it. I was looking at it all the time. And yeah. Were you prepared more than other people because uh, for 2020 because I know t 2020 has been mm -hmm. um, kind of uh, a, a blind side to some people mm -hmm. so were you prepared for it you know I saw that there was a lot of changes going on yeah. in the structures of the world government structures yeah. so as soon as the COVID thing happened right away I'm like oh this has to do with the what's going on with like the structures of the world changing right because that's what I saw in the astrology I didn't know it wasn't clear to me that the pandemic or the pandemic was going to be a was going to instigate that yeah. before. Like I didn't see, I was unaware of that. But um, you know, I didn't look at it too deeply. But I, I definitely saw that there's a lot of changes going on in the world over the coming years. Yeah, and it's something that's been going on. It's been playing out for a while. But but 2020 is just so many things happening, so many alignments yeah. in 2020 that just kind of. Uh, sped up the process right. of, of this. So, right. So yeah. one, one of my favorite things about talking to Carmen is that he makes connections between what is happening um, on the, uh, with the planets and how they affect society and the individual. Uh, you know, everything is energy. Mm -hmm. So I, I really, I believe that, you know, there is an actual effect. Now, there's something really important that's happening mm. on Monday. And so before we get to the actual solstice, can we, can you tell us a little bit about why it is so significant that Jupiter and Saturn are meeting? Mm. Um, Jupiter and Saturn meet every 20 years. Right. Right. So <clears throat> whenever two planets come together, it's, a, it's called a conjunction. So those two planets kind of join forces, but it's really the beginning of a cycle. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's kind of like when it's a new moon 
when it's a new moon, the sun and moon come together, but it's the beginning of the lunar cycle. Right. right? So the moon moves faster to the sun, it comes back. It's like a hour hand and a minute hand, right? Mm -hmm. So Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter's a faster than Saturn, mm -hmm. a little bit more than, um, just generally mm -hmm. speaking, like Saturn, is, Jupiter's like twice as fast, generally. It's not exactly like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it happens every, every 20 years. Um, but this one is extra significant because... It's on solstice, yeah. which is solstice is like a very uh, magical time of year. It's, yeah. it's sort of like a portal in a way. Um, but the solstice is also kind of like the, the new moon of the year in a way, because that's, from, from, that's the darkest day of the year in the northern hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And then from that point on... It starts to get lighter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It starts to, you know, we start to have more daylight in the northern hemisphere. There's a, so many things about this conjunction that is really emphasizing the significance of it. So it's on the solstice. Yeah. It's at zero degrees Aquarius. It's right at the beginning of Aquarius. Mm. Like literally in the days leading up to the, to the solstice, Saturn and Jupiter were in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, today Saturn entered Aquarius. Mm. And then Jupiter's going to enter Aquarius following it. They're both entering Aquarius, like holding hands together. That's right? so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Because <laughs> Saturn's been in Capricorn for the last almost three years. It entered, right. actually Saturn already entered Aquarius this year and then it retrograded back. It was been on the cusp of Aquarius Capricorn already, but right. now Jupiter's coming with it. Yeah. Um, so it's at the zero degree. So whenever, like the beginning of a sign is also very potent because mm. it's, it's like the start of the sign. Mm -hmm. So it has, that even has energy of new beginnings, mm. right? So the solstice is the beginning of like, um, you know, more sunlight in the, in the year. More and then, light. Yeah. yeah, and then and then zero degrees Aquarius. And then also, it's the closest that they have been in, in almost 800 years. This is the closest? Yeah, in 800 years almost. Okay, yeah. wait. So every 20 years they meet. They meet, but, but, not a, but this is even closer. This is the closest they've ever yes, been. in 800 years. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So hence the reason why it's called the Great or Grand Conjunction. No, it's conjunction. always called the Great Conjunction. Oh, it's always Every called? Every 20 years it's called the Great Conjunction. Why yeah. though? Like, because, because they're the two okay, largest... Okay, so let me explain. Yeah. So that, yeah, we've got to explain Jupiter and Saturn more. So Jupiter and Saturn are the biggest um, visible planets with the naked eye. Right. And they have the furthest orbits. Mm. Right, because Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are not visible with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. And they have, they're like a different category of planets. Um, and they're different, you know, they're different sizes. But Jupiter and Saturn are the biggest visible, biggest orbit of visible, yeah. visible planets. And Jupiter and Saturn are kind of like the regulators of society. Mm. Right? So Saturn has to do with the structures of the world. Um, when we talk about on a collective level, Saturn mm -hmm. could mean different things on an individual level too. And Jupiter has to do with beliefs. So mm -hmm. like beliefs and structures. And they both uh, have a major effect on the economy and geopolitical matters and uh, just how the world is like systems in the world and yeah. things like that so um, now another thing that's significant is every 200 years approximately yeah this is the major part now the other, everything's major but every 200 years um, Jupiter and Saturn like when they happen every 20 years they're primarily in one one, one element for the last mm -hmm. 200 years they've been in earth science so mm. this is the, f we've been transitioning. So now this is an air mm. and we're in air for the long haul now, like until for the next almost 200 mm. years. So, but we've been transitioning into air since uh, 1980, 1981. In 1980, 1981, we had a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Libra. Mm -hmm. But then in the year 2000, it, it went back into Earth. Right. So whenever mm. the, it transitions from one element to the next, they call it a mutation. Right. Um, sometimes there's like overlap, like it might go in one element, then retrogress back into the other element. Yeah. So we're going, so the last 200 years, we've been in an earth period, like yeah. the, the economy and the world and the way the world is structured. Materialism. Yeah, exactly. Capitalism, materialism. Capitalism, yeah. Um, Interesting. And now moving into air. Now we're moving into air, but we've been tra transitioning into air for the last 40 years. 40 years. But now we're in it for good now. Now it's like, it's game on now. You know, we've Interesting. Been, yeah. Since the 80s, like if you look at uh, air, air rules like computers technology innovation it's more mental it's more social yeah. it's more intellectual yeah right and if we look at um the the jupiter saturn cycle from 1980 until the year 2000 that yeah. 20 year cycle yeah that's when we started to see computer like by the time i got to the 90s yeah. almost every young family had a computer in their home the internet became commercialized um 
I used to listen to a lot of, I listened to a lot of like 70s music and in yeah. the 80s, a lot of 70s bands went electronic. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of weird, but anyways. Yeah, so so it, it, we started going into more of like a, it already started in the 80s, um, well, but then the, we- That went, makes me think about spirituality too, and mm. like meditation becoming more popular, um, these more, mm -hmm. like, how do I say But that? it's not it's really like, spiritual. Like, what do you mean? Air is not necessarily spiritual. Not necessarily, but no. there, it still has this uh, expansiveness. Exactly, yeah, like information. It's, air is about information. Maybe uh, even intelligence, would you say? Intelligence, yeah, but it's not necessarily, air is not necessarily spiritual. It's very mental energy. Hmm. It's intellectual, it's a mental energy. It's not, spiritual would be more, like if you're going to say what element is the most spiritual, it would be water or fire. I think. More Do you moderate. consider ether an element? Yeah, well, ether, ether, not, uh, yes, but ether is not something that is assigned in astrology. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. but definitely, yeah. But it's, well, it's, ether is like in a different category. Yeah. Yeah, but, so yeah, we're going from, from earth to air, um, and but now it's like really, we're really going into it, because we've been, for the last 40 years, we've had yeah. one foot in air, one foot in earth. It's been a mix of both. Now we're going into air, but we're still coming from earth. Mm. Right, we're still Earth is not completely going away because it's we're coming from Earth going into air, yeah. so it's, it's still kind of there. But but yeah. but now we're integrating more more of an air kind Whoa. of world. Right, that's really cool. Yeah. I like I read that very quickly in some mm. in some of the articles, but I didn't really um, absorb the enormity of what moving into the air element could mm. entail. You know, I could already feel like technology becoming mm -hmm. and playing more of a role in our lives. Oh, it's been happening. And I mean, you, you don't need the astrology to see yeah, it. It's yeah. already been happening, but like, um, it's more, it's like air could even be about freedom. It's yeah. information, the internet, uh, but even there's negative, like now we're going into Aquarius. It's like, right. Oh. So that's interesting because yeah. it's right in the beginning. So many people are talking about, it's the age of Aquarius. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It's questionable. And it's it's ushering in the golden age, the golden era, and, you know, yeah. new earth paradigms and, and all that stuff. Well, that's questionable. That's questionable. So the, the maybe, I hope so. Yeah. Um, What's your take on it? The way I see it is, um, okay, it's reasonable because of all the interesting things about the solstice and this conjunction. Mm. It's reasonable to think that it's the age of Aquarius beginning, right? Because it's on the solstice. It's at zero degrees Aquarius, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, closest they've been in eight hundred years, right? It's, and it's now we're going fully into air. Um, but the astrological ages are not represent are not based on planets, right? But this it's reasonable to think that. This is a planetary representation of the ushering of the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is, mm -hmm. but the astrological ages are based on the um, the procession mm -hmm. of the sky of the of the, zo of the sidereal zodiac or constellations, yeah. right? And that's a two thousand year, approximately two thousand year period. Yeah. Now, another thing I have to mention is that the the observation of these two thousand year ages. It's only been, as far as I know, it's only been observed in the last couple hundred years. If you go further than that, if you look at astrology, and I'm talking Western astrology, sure. obviously there's different yeah, systems, yeah. but in Western astrology, as far as I know, I haven't seen it myself, but I've, you know, I learned things from other astrologers who are more uh, research history more and, and interpret like, um, you know, interpret old books that are in other languages and yeah. things like that. So, as far as I know, there's no mention of the astrological ages up until a couple hundred years ago hmm. in the older texts. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a new thing of this, this observation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's, it's not correct, but it's, yeah. it raises questions, right? Yeah. Now, the, if you base the um, beginning of the age of Aquarius on the when, so basically there's, there's different zodiacs, right? So we use tropical zodiac, but then there's another zodiac called the sidereal zodiac which moves with the stars, it moves with the constellations. Mm -hmm. It's always moving, right? Mm -hmm. Every 72 years, it moves one degree. So when most people talk about the ages, they're basing it on that. If we base it on the procession of the sidereal zodiac, um, 
the age of Aquarius actually starts between like 300 and 400 years from now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, but but it's gray areas. So. Well, see that that's the interesting part yeah. because honestly, when mm. this COVID stuff uh, hit, mm. like immediately in my being, I was like, "Oh my God, this is how the world changes!" Like, and I I, I knew yeah. I was going to see uh, like the golden age, let's call it. Like, mm. I had a feeling like, "Hey, I might see this in my lifetime," but I thought it was going to be like later, like while yeah. like i'm on my deathbed like it might just be coming in and so when this all this covid stuff happened and i had this intuitive hit of like this is how the world changes and i was like whoa it felt like something accelerated well you're definitely right the world's changing that's for sure it's that's, changed it's, it's changing it's like it's definitely changing absolutely yeah. but is it the age of aquarius we don't know it's a gray area yeah i don't if you don't like know. i said if you're basing on the sidereal zodiac it's not Mm -hmm. It's not, but you can also say that the ages are more than 2,000 years mm -hmm. and we're still close to the cusp, mm -hmm. but it's, we're definitely going to air period and we're definitely going to Aquarian period. Well, in your opinion, yeah. does it feel like a, a new beginning? Oh, definitely, but it's going to feel like age of Aquarius. Like, it, there is going to be a lot of Aquarian things going on. Like what? It's already happening. Like, like for example... What are some Aquarian things? <laughs> positive Aquarian things would be... Um, you know, community, humanitarianism, mm. freedom, mm. Um, you know, the positive aspects of technology, the internet's very Aquarian as well, the social media and all that. And that we've already been transitioning, it's already been happening. Anything to do with technology, right? Yeah. Especially computer technology. But Aquarius could also be, now some of these things, it depends on your worldview, you might perceive as positive or negative. Right. But uh, like socialistic, like socialism, communism yeah. um, is Aquarian. AI is Aquarian, uh, technocratic society is Aquarian, Aquarian. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Um, merging, just humans merging with technology, mRNA and all this stuff, like 5G everywhere. Transhumanism. Transhumanism, it's completely Aquarian. Wow. Yeah. So when people get excited about the age of Aquarius, I'm like, are you sure you want the age of Aquarius? <laughs> I can go I'd rather you. stay in the age of Pisces, because age of Pisces is more spiritual. It's Pisces to Aquarius is moving backwards. Huh. Yeah, because Pisces is the last sign. Like the mm -hmm. ages move backwards, okay, not forward. So I'd rather stay in the age of Pisces, to be <laughs> honest. But but it's again, it's a gray area, and I think we are still in the age of Pisces. But it but it, that's if the ages are are the ages a real thing? Yeah. And um, and if they are, are we in the age of Aquarius? And right. like I said, it could be three to four hundred years. So now I don't know how much you know or want to get into this, but. Mm. Um, can we talk about like ascension things? This is another yeah, hot yeah. topic. Yeah, and then we'll, like, like, we're talking about like golden age. You mean right. like going yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, now, now when we step out of Western astrology right mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. we had the, and we're close, we either had the end of the Mayan calendar or we're still close to it. Yeah. Then there's the like golden age, the Kali Yuga, there's yeah. different cultures around the world, different indigenous cultures view this period yeah. as Very we're going into a golden times. age yeah. yeah and if you look at a lot of uh, new age literature or some new age literature i remember reading something where they said that the age of aquarius and the age of leo which they're opposite signs mm -hmm. whenever we enter those ages which would be like every thirteen thousand years or whatever mm. the that's when we enter what's called the photon belt or the photon band which is light age of light yeah um there's a big question mark around that how do we know that's true how do I can't, we know I can't prove true. that. No. No. But when we look at, when we look, but then, but there is a lot of cultures that believe we're going into a golden age. So how did they all know that? So it's possible. I think there is some truth because if you look at the last, like when I got into spirituality and everything, I'm in astrology and everything I'm into now, since 2006, there's been like a huge awakening. Huge. So, yeah. yeah. Huge, right? Yeah. And, and so there, there is something. And then also in, this is one thing that really gets my attention, in 2007, 2008, that was a very, there was a significant alignment then. It was, Jupiter was aligned with Pluto. Um, 2008? Yeah, around that time, right? Mm. And that was the, f see, Jupiter aligns with Pluto every 12, 13, like this year we had a Jupiter-Pluto alignment right. too. Right, yeah, I remember that. Um, it happens every like 12 plus years. Right. But that was when Jupiter and Pluto were aligned. They were aligned at the galactic center. They were aligned at the galactic center. Yeah, and that happens center. like every thousand years. So what? Like that might have happened when Jesus was here. Like like every thousand years that happens. 
the galactic center is a symbol of it represents like higher consciousness yeah. and um, new ideas coming in to help humanity evolve and yeah. move forward and it's it's the center of the galaxy mm -hmm, right and, mm -hmm. and it's also can be destructive too mm -hmm. um, but Jupiter was in Sagittarius it rules Sagittarius this is 2008 it rules Sagittarius and it was aligned with Pluto and Pluto Jupiter has to do with like spirituality and belief systems yeah. and perspectives and Pluto can have to do with uh, consciousness conspiracies um, hidden aspects of life psychology yeah uh, deeper deeper perspectives right yeah so so they were aligned those two energies were aligned at the center of the galaxy and around that time that's when a lot of um, that's when a lot of uh, like documentaries and things are coming out about consciousness yeah, spirituality zeitgeist yeah. esoteric agenda and stuff like that so yeah. that was a seeding period like a lot of the alternative media and spirituality yeah. and, um, that came after that was has to do with what was seeded at yeah. that time because when two plants come together it's a seeding period so yeah. right now with Saturn Jupiter it's a seeding period interesting yeah I totally totally can see that within mm -hmm. my own life so that was more if you want to talk about consciousness I think that was more significant than anything well it was a seeding yeah. time because yeah. I wouldn't be sitting here with you right now yeah. if it wasn't for that yeah what happened to, to yeah. me you know, back then and mm -hmm. understanding you know yeah, it could be part of what you're saying. That's yeah, so cool. Sure. So now let's go back to um, Jupiter and Saturn meeting. Mm -hmm. Everyone's excited about that day. Yeah. And it's going to be cool. It's going to be a cool thing to see if you can see it. Yeah. Um, but it's not like that day we're going to, like something crazy is going to happen. Like maybe, maybe. But well, there's, there's people calling it the event. The event is happening. It the is event an event. Is coming. Yeah, astronom like from an astronomy perspective, it's totally an event. Yeah. But as far as like what's going to manifest on Earth, it's a seeding period. Right. So you might not necessarily, there could be something major that happens. Yeah. But there, there will be things that happen that around that time and even the week before and after. Yeah. But it's seeding a cycle. Yeah, that makes sense. So it doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean like something major will happen. There may be, maybe, yeah. but, but things are being seeded at this time. That, that's yeah. what it is. And okay. so you have to look at it like this is the beginning of a 20 year Aquarian cycle, but also we're, we're now fully in an air period for 200 years 200 approximately. Years. Yeah. Probably, like there's some overlap. So that's how you need, that's what we need to see. So if I'm gonna give people advice, I'm gonna think about where's the future going? What does this mean for the future? What does this mean for the economy? What does this mean for society? Mm -hmm. And what could you do to be compatible with it are you are you hanging on to the old earth world or are you are you stepping embracing the air that's the best advice i can give right so a lot of people that are hanging on um like for example with everything that's been going on with 2020 um a lot of the businesses for example that are suffering are more earth brick and mortar businesses and, yeah. and then with the election like with trump um trump represents earth more mm. even though he's the air sign he's He's like capitalist, you know, yeah. right? So, so people are hanging on, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying like the alternative is better, but it's, you know, he represented, like sometimes when you transition from one thing to another, yeah. it's, you, you hang on to what's leaving, right? Oh, yeah. So a lot of people are hanging on. So my advice is to just, you know, how can you adapt to this new world that we're going into? And, to, and it's already been happening, yes. but now we're fully in it. And so how could you make your life more compatible with it so that you can thrive? And, you know, that, that's the best advice. And not not to say for that advice. day, but I would, I would say that that day, yeah, maybe you want to do a meditation, you want to try yeah. to tune into it. Sure. And maybe there will be some interesting things yeah, we that will. happen for sure. Let's so, see. Yeah, so yeah. I'm super curious. <laughs> yeah, maybe, right? Yeah. There will be things being seated. Like you have to understand whenever t it's like with the, with the COVID situation. Yeah. Okay. That has to do with a Saturn Pluto alignment. A lot of it. It has to do with other things too. Yeah. Even the, this this Saturn Jupiter is connected to the COVID too. Yeah. Because the COVID situation created the landscape for it. But there was a Saturn Pluto alignment. Well, we know that Saturn is more like structure and stuff, right? Yeah, but it, but the COVID situation is excelling the move towards an air economy and an air world. The COVID situation is accelerating us towards the air. Towards air. Why? Air's, because people can't go to work because <laughs> they don't want to get COVID. So they're, they're on Zoom calls. That's air. 
Interesting. Yeah, people businesses shutting down. Yeah, no, I hey, I'm like, all, people can't go to a restaurant; they got to order on Uber Eats. Yeah, it's air. I'm all for acceleration. Yeah, <laughs> like, so, it's so, totally fine. Yeah, well, it depends what you're. Some people is going to suffer, right? So yeah, th- that's what I'm trying to say is is it, it's already been happening, but yeah. so so because. So this COVID is connected to the Saturn Jupiter conjunction, even though COVID happened before it. Yeah. The Saturn Jupiter conjunction was on the horizon already. It was, it was com- coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. It's yeah. not like you can't change the astronomy. We know it's coming. Yeah, we know yeah, the yeah. astronomy for the next thousands of years. Right. So the the but what happened was in January there was a Saturn Pluto conjunction, which has a lot to do with the COVID. Mm. But the COVID didn't really kick in in the world until like March. March. Yeah, that's when I started to not like in China they yeah. had a lockdown. Yeah. Right. And in China, they had um, that's when around January. So just Saturn and Pluto came together in January. Yeah. But it affected the rest of the year. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Saturn and Ju- Pluto. Pluto. Sorry. Oh. Saturn and Pluto. Saturn and Pluto came together in January. Yeah, but you couldn't see it in the sky. Because, no, but that's so interesting. Yeah. Because like here we are at Jupiter and Saturn now in December. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. A lot of alignments, conjunctions this year. A lot of cycles. So much. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Like, I would look up in the sky, or it was some some cool thing in the Pluto, sky. Though. No, you, you can't, can't see Pluto. Pluto. But I remember there were in the summertime. I think um, there was like they showed up. The comet. Yeah, the yeah. comet. There's and comet too. There's a couple, a bunch of comets. There was comets. But and that one was, was, there was one that was visible. Yeah, and Mars has been visible a lot because of the Mars retrograde. Right, yeah. and Venus you could see too. It depends the time. It depends, right? But but Mars uh, was was brighter than normal. But, yeah. but every two years, it's like that because it goes retrograde. So like with the COVID, yeah. it, it, a lot of it the, the has to do with alignment that happened in January. Yeah. So a lot of things receded in January. That's when COVID was identified. China went to lockdown. Yeah. But then it wasn't until months later. So same thing with the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction. Yeah. It's affecting a long-term period. So it doesn't mean like... Yeah. So there will be things happening that are being seeded. Yeah. But we may not... Think about them. It's like in January, no one was really thinking about COVID, but it was happening. Well, I was tracking it back in January too. You were, but most people weren't. Yeah. Yeah. And there's something weird about time. So Mm -hmm. let's go back to acceleration. Now, now I've had to be okay with acceleration because Mm -hmm. it it's like this is what's happening. Like sometimes time feels like, well, it's it's taking so long, and then Mm -hmm. other times it's like, whoa, that's Mm -hmm. what's happening, man. Like I can barely keep up. So can yeah. astrology help us understand this wonkiness with mm. time? Like why time speeding up? Or slow down sometimes or yeah, or let's 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 talk about the speed yeah, up. Yeah, I think well, I it's, think it's kind it, of that's kind of a weird thing cuz like when I was really into like the mind calendar and all that, they said that time is going to keep speeding up. Yeah. But then is that because of age, like, does everyone feel like that when they get older? Because <laughs> we get more responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. like, because when, when, when you're young, time, I remember going oh, yeah. to school, I'm like, when's school going to end? When's going to end? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, I want to go home and play video games. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like, I'm trying to get things, I can't get everything done, I got to get done, right? So, but does it have to do with time speeding up? Does it have to do with the evolution of consciousness? Like, what they said, what the Mayans were saying, or what's yeah. what the, some of the Mayan uh, scholars were saying? Or is that just have to do with getting older? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like. Yeah. My take on it yeah. is that uh, it's like our relationship with mm-hmm. time really, just like our relationship with death, really needs to um, be uh, looked at again mm-hmm. and 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 deeply understood. Um, and so, like, what is time? I constantly think about this. When I was twenty, I, I I actually desperately was trying to figure out a way how I could stop time because oh, it wow. stressed me out so much. Mm-hmm. And now, like, what, fifteen years later, I'm like, man, <laughs> like, I'm getting okay with time because it's all about present moment for me now. Because mm-hmm. it's like I'm safe right here, right now in the present moment. So perhaps this mm-hmm. accelerating, it feels like this acceleration is pushing us to right now, this moment. That could be true, yeah. Like there's, there's see the thing is, is like astrology, um, there's a lot of other things happening on spiritual levels mm-hmm. that doesn't necessarily, you can't really see it. They astro- don't coincide? Yeah, well maybe, but like there, there could be some, there, there, there could be some coinciding, but it's not, um, I don't know if that's the right word. Like it's uh, like there's bigger cycles, and then there's bigger. Yeah. Like astrology has a lot to do with it. Like it regulates, you know, what's going or it reflects what's going on on Earth. But when yeah. it comes to um, 
but it has to do with like it reflects like what's going on in the physical world yeah 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 so on a spiritual level like you can have profound spiritual experiences like right. let's say you have like a major spiritual awakening yeah it'll be reflected in the astrology for sure for sure 100 percent. but yeah. but there's um a lot of it is reflected in the astrology, but then there's still, we don't know everything. There's still some miss, there's always missing pieces. Right. right? And we're always trying to figure Let it out. Let me run something by yeah. you real quick. So when I was uh, like feeling into like mm -hmm. the this meeting of these two awesome planets, um, it was that, it was like meeting. And I'm very into external uh, reflecting internal mm -hmm. and vice versa. So could this meeting of Saturn and Jupiter also reflect a meeting within us? Perhaps it's something, it's showing us that, you know, you're meeting an aspect of you that maybe you forgot about or um, a new a new part of you that you didn't even know existed. Is that it's too possible. far off? No, it's possible, yeah. It depends how it's interacting with your astrological blueprint. I think that's, a, that's an interesting thing to say. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. their meeting. So what's yeah. something inside of you could be meeting as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what can we expect for 2021? The main things when you look at the backdrop mm. are the eclipses because eclipses happen every six months. And then if there's any major connections with the planets, like mm -hmm. the outer planets. Mm -hmm. um, so the main thing is, is Uranus is going to be in a square with Saturn um, while well, Saturn's in Aquarius, obviously. Um, so there's probably going to be Saturn has to do with structures and um, boundaries and limitations and uh, sometimes it could represent authorities and Uranus is rebellion revolution shaking things up um, separation disruption so Uranus and Saturn in a hard aspect so mm -hmm. there could be some disruptive energy to structures and uh, maybe you know people rebelling against things but I don't think it's gonna be as intense as 2020 mm. I think that the next major year with Again, there's more, there's things, there's so much data, I don't, I know, but, yeah. but the one year that I've been eyeing for a long time is 2024. Me too. Yeah, 2024. For me for different reasons, mm -hmm. uh, like for my esoteric and spiritual teachings and stuff. Yeah. So that's so interesting that you say that. Mm -hmm. Gives me a little bit of confirmation inside. Yeah. 2024 is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm like super politically, stoked for that. Politically, uh, politically, but. Oh, I mean, you, can, uh, you can see that like uh, specifically politically? Oh, 100 geopolitically, 100 like it's especially to do that. with the United States, yeah. Um, but spiritually, uh, you know, I don't know, but but politically for sure, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing is like so when we're talking about Saturn, Jupiter, those are like long term energies, right? Mm. But then on a day to day basis, there's short term. There's like Merc maybe you know what it is too. I uh, I've been noticing some stuff not not to do with the big tech, but just with my own tech. Yeah. And I've been and I think. Um, uh, anything to do information technology is connected to mercury uranus mm. and mercury is in the is not like in the best place right now it's mm. not retrograde mm. but mercury is in a sign that it's like doesn't want to be in mm. right? it's in sagittarius just like some people if we're in positions that we don't want to be in you know yeah yeah that can be that, it so yeah, yeah yeah that can reflect that for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah yeah so the so that's what um that can have something to do it something to do with it plus there was an eclipse on monday mm -hmm. eclipses are disrupt that was a total solar eclipse wow yeah that was super powerful leading yeah. up and even the residual after yeah the eclipses affect yeah, yeah especially around it before and after so yeah. eclipses are disruptive yeah right when there's an eclipse the the moon when it's a solar eclipse the moon is blocking the light of the sun yeah it's disrupting it yeah a lot of people get excited like oh an eclipse yeah it's great but it's not it's in back disruptive. Yeah. traditionally i mean they're from a from a spiritual evolutionary perspective yeah. it's good like it eclipses ref, have a strong revolution evolutionary energy mm. in your, like depending on how it's affecting your natal chart right there's there it affects your chart in an evolutionary way yeah um but it's it's disrupting the energy of the sun and it yeah. feels weird like I, I remember the great american eclipse in 2017 yeah it kinda had like a, i remember watching it, it was a kind of heavy energy well i was in know? the sky on an airplane while at, at its really? apex yeah it oh, was geez. so you powerful saw it in the plane? we oh. we i couldn't see it but man i could feel it i, I went into want to deep be in the sky i went into that. meditation and i yeah. knocked the hell out like yeah. i just like passed out yeah. woke up and i was like oh god we're almost there and so yeah it was really interesting it's a weird energy it is a weird when so, it, especially when it's visible in your area mm. yeah speaking of the sun um our sun is doing like 
crazy things right now. Like the solar flares. Yeah, like, there's yeah. a lot of solar mm -hmm. uh, activity happening mm -hmm. right now. And so people have been talking about how we are traveling to the galactic center as well. Well, okay. So that, sorry, that goes back to what we're saying before. Like the, the thing with the solar flares and all that might have something to do with the evolution of consciousness and, you know, mm. that might have something to do with it. Mm. Right. We're, we're extremely closely tied to our sun. Oh, we're... So if sun's doing things, mm. you better believe that it's, oh, you're going to feel it. We're part of the sun. Yeah. We're like people, this is the thing is we look at ourselves as... Um, I did a video a year, like probably a decade ago, talking about this. We look at ourselves as physical beings on Earth, right? But we're, you know, we're, we're, we're Earthlings, right? But we're actually Sunlings. Hmm. We're part of our sun. Mm -hmm. If you were in another star system mm -hmm. and you're looking at our, you're not going to see Earth, you're going to see the sun. the sun. Earth is in the sun's light. Yeah. So we're beings of our sun. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So, in our sun is connected to our soul. Soul mm. is sun, right? Mm. So, oh, that's so beautiful. And the sun is connected to our heart. Yeah. yeah. So, I think, the if anything, it's the solar activity that could have a lot to do with the evolution of consciousness. But I'm not an expert. There's a lot of that. See, the thing is with that, you can't predict it like you could astrology. Like astrology, we know where you, all the positions no, yeah, are going to exactly. be. The solar flares, you know a little bit. Like, yeah. But it's not as... Um, it's different, right? And so, and same thing with comets. Like yeah, we don't yeah. know when they they just show up, and they're yeah. like, oh, geez. So, but but planetary things, you know. So, uh, I think that has more to do with it. Interesting. Yeah, and astro a lot of astrologers don't look at that. Some do. So what what happens on the solstice? Because you said it's aligned uh, with the galactic center. Days before the solstice, yeah. Because the, the the winter solstice is the first day of Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Because the signs are based are pegged to. The solstices and equinoxes. Mm. So Capricorn is always a f is, is the, the solstice, first, yeah. yeah. And then Aries is, is the equinox. So the days before the solstice, that's when we're at the end of Sagittarius. The right. end of Sagittarius is the galactic center. So yeah. okay, so they meet and then they start to go out again. Yeah. So what's going to happen is Jupiter is going to move faster. So Jupiter is going to go ahead of Saturn. Mm. And then, the, you know, and that's it. And then we'll come back in another 20 years. Yeah. So Jupiter will be in the same, will be in Aquarius for a year. Saturn will be in Aquarius for a couple of years. Yeah. So maybe two and a half years. So yeah. the, um, so they'll be in the same sign. They'll be housed in the same sign. Cool. But Jupiter is, um, like, so they'll still be, even when you look at the sky, they won't be that far from each other. Mm -hmm. But Jupiter is going to be uh, moving ahead like, of it. On yeah. a personal note, mm -hmm. I have Saturn in my chart. And mm. I never really paid attention to it. And mm. in the last, I would say, you know, three months, mm. I'm, uh, I'm feeling it, the aspects of it uh, uh, showing itself more and more. Mm. I kind of feel excited to see, mm. you know, what else it, as yeah, I yeah. embrace Saturn But maybe more Saturn, more. maybe Saturn is doing something to your chart, like your other planets. So the thing is, when you look at astrology, um, your, your most sensitive planets in astrology are your personal planets. Mm. So like your sun. Well, sun and moon are considered luminaries. Yes. They're lights, right? But the, but then your sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars are the most sensitive planets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if Saturn or Jupiter are hitting one of those, you really feel it. Mm -hmm. If you're, it's your Saturn return, you'll feel it. But, you know, any planet you'll feel, but, but especially those the personal planets, mm -hmm. you'll notice more. So it's possible that Saturn in the sky is maybe aligned or configured to one of your in personal such a planets. Way, yeah. Unless you're in your Saturn return. How old are you right now? No, I think I passed. Uh, oh, you passed it, yeah. Maybe. Wait, Saturn return? Sol no, I was getting solar return. Solar return no, was your birthday. At, yeah, Saturn return happens every 29 years. 29? Yeah, so the age uh, of 29, no. 20, yeah, yeah, 20, yeah. 30. Oh, so yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. yeah, so Saturn return, well, it's usually not a good time for a lot of people, but... The, the Saturn. I mean, return. ultimately it is. Yeah, from a personal development yeah. perspective, but it could be heavy, it could be tough. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. super rough. So, the Saturn return is all a very powerful Saturn period. Yeah. Carmen, I want to thank you so much for stopping yeah, no by problem. the studio and chatting with us and sharing all your knowledge and insight about this year, the next year, and um, keeping us informed on what to look out for. Cool, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.